Today we're taking a look at the best tier 10 battleships in the tech tree. I wanted to give you my thoughts on all of these ships and which ones I think are the best to grind in 2023. So today I want to talk a little bit about each one of these tech tree battleships, talk a little bit about the grind, but more importantly how good these tier 10s are in the tier 10 meta. Because after all, if you're spending all that time and effort to grind towards these tier 10s, you probably want a good reward at the end, not a ship that really is difficult to play and doesn't fit the meta particularly well. I should also mention before we get started, for most of the ships on this list, I've made a series of one take videos where I just play two live games for you. I don't want to skew the results in any direction by saving and showing only the best games. You can check that on the channel. There's a playlist and I'll leave some links in the description down below. Definitely give those a look if you're looking for actual gameplay, my thoughts of how to play them live. So to start with, let's take a look at the Montana. I'm putting it in B tier. I think it's just an average tier 10 battleship. I don't think there's anything particularly amazing about Montana outside of its tankiness. It's overall a pretty tanky battleship, but having 406 millimeter guns isn't amazing at tier 10. You don't have a ton of overmatch that way. It's a lot of very tanky cruisers that can just really bounce all of your shells. It's a reasonably accurate ship. It's decent overall, but if you're looking to grind a battleship in 2023, I think there's better options for new players and for people looking for a bit more unique experience. Next up, the Republic. I think this is an amazing tier 10 battleship. You get 431 millimeter guns, which means you're overmatching 30 millimeters of armor, which is pretty common in a lot of cruisers. Republic has great range, it has great dispersion, its shell velocity is awesome, the reload is ridiculous, nearly 20 seconds reload. It's not the tankiest ship in the world, but it's reasonably quick with its speed boost, and I think given that it has a decent amount of HP, even though it only has that 32 millimeters of armor, it's tanky enough that this ship can definitely turn a lot of battles in your favor. And I think everyone knows, 20 seconds of reload on a ship with these good guns, it's just going to be a good time. Republic is always a good experience. However, the grind is a little bit harder. Montana is a pretty vanilla grind. Uh, Republic grind kind of flips back and forth. So you might have a little bit of difficulties around tier 7 and then tier 8. I think it's a little bit better as you get those uh, 380 millimeter guns. But the tier 10 is worth it. The Republic is an amazing ship to get at the end. And I think that's true for both new players and for more experienced players. If you don't have the Republic yet, I think it's very much worth getting. Now to get the little stinker out of the way, uh, Columbo. I think this ship is just not very good. You lack range. Your gimmick is sap on the main guns, which is extremely powerful. But the way they've balanced that is poor dispersion and extremely long reload. The 360 turrets in the back are fun. The fuel smoke is very interesting. If you're looking for a weird, difficult to play, but very different experience battleship, this is one you could go for, but for new players, I definitely don't recommend it. And I think there's other interesting battleships on the list that are also much better in the meta. I should also mention that the grind is a little bit awkward at tier eight and tier nine especially, but the tier eight really is a bit weird with having long reload, low caliber guns, it's basically the problems of the entire line, but the tier eight really makes it quite difficult. Next up, we've got Kremlin, a very strong ship that is very, very weak to carriers. This ship is very, very tough to play in tier 10, assuming there's carriers in the game. The AA was nerfed. This is one big thing that you won't see in launch or early Kremlin videos. The ship wants to push in, it wants to tank, bow tank, and it does a really, really good job of that. However, the HE shells in this game strip this ship's AA very, very quickly, meaning you're very vulnerable to carriers, which is a big downside to the Kremlin. The other things to consider are poor long range accuracy. Yes, there's going to be times where you see clips of Kremlin having perfect dispersion at range. Uh, that doesn't happen very often. It does have overmatch and overall it's a very tanky battleship. So it's gonna go in B tier for me. I think there's a lot of downsides to playing Kremlin these days, but it's also, in the right circumstances, one of the strongest battleships in the game. And as you're grinding through the tiers, once you get up to tier 7, you're going to have a very similar playstyle all the way through, and I think it's a pretty decent grind overall. 
Now Schlieffen I'm putting in A tier, not necessarily because it's going to be one of the best battleships at tier 10. In fact, I think it's a very situational battleship, but the reason I have it in A tier for a tech tree best battleships to grind in 2023 is it's so unique. These secondaries are super fun to use. The concealment combined with those secondaries, you got some cool torpedoes to make use of as well. Schlieffen's a very, very interesting ship to play, and the grind all the way through is pretty fun if you're interested in that secondary battleship playstyle. I don't think it's really going to be amazing in the tier 10 meta. It's hard to make it in that campy long range experience with Schlieffen, but you do have concealment and speed on your side to flank and provide that solid push late, mid to late game. Uh, and I think it's a lot of fun. So if you're a newer player, maybe not this ship, but if you've played a couple of battleships already through the lines, uh, I think Schlieffen is a great one to go for in 2023. Next up, I want to cover the Preussen because we looked at Schlieffen last and yeah, I got it in C tier. Yes, you get better reload, you get similar reload and gun caliber to the Republic. The problem is your accuracy is just worse. And even though Preussen is much tankier than the Republic, it's just the superstructure. It's so massive on the Preussen that it becomes a very easy target to farm as well. So Preussen is a ship that if you're playing in that longer range sniping kind of 20 second reload with 30 millimeter overmatch roll, I would just go for Republic all the time. If you're trying to play Preussen up close and brawl and get those secondaries going, well, Schlieffen is just a better secondary ship. I think that's the big biggest thing that I have thought about that I didn't really want to tell myself is that Preussen doesn't actually do that much damage with its secondaries. So then why am I specking into them? <laughs> that's... Uh, that's a tough pill to swallow because I've always wanted these secondary brawling battleships to be good and fun to use. I think they're very, very fun. Um, I just don't know if Preussen is that amazing in that role specifically. It really comes down to this long duration that it takes for these secondaries to actually get accurate these days. That's one of the biggest nerfs to secondaries recently. So Preussen, even though it does have that turtle back, and for a lot of people they recommend the German battleships to beginners... I don't think so. I don't think so as much. Certainly at tier 10, it's really not a great reward. Um, but if you have a lot of tier 10 battleships and you're interested in a Republic that can maybe play a little bit closer and get in on those secondaries, I think you can go for it. But it's not my favorite tier 10 battleship. Up next, we have the Vermont. And you might be surprised it's in B tier. Uh, I think it is overall stronger than B tier. I just think there's a lot of frustration that comes with a 40 second reload. Uh, so that's why I have it down here. The concealment is amazing. The buffs to its maneuverability are awesome. You have 12 extremely accurate 457 millimeter guns, which means you're overmatching 30 millimeters of armor. I just find that 40 seconds is oftentimes a long time to wait. Um, World of Warships is a slow game already, uh, but Vermont takes that to the next level. I think if you're a newer player, there's going to be much better ships to grind for. Uh, if you're more experienced, I think Vermont is a good pickup, though. So I think B tier is very reasonable for this ship. As far as 2023 battleships, you should be looking to grind. Up next, we have one of the newest Tick Tree battleships. So this one I won't have as much coverage on the channel for. Uh, but St. Vincent is awesome. I've been recently playing a little bit of clan battles again. Uh, this thing absolutely crushes there. You have amazing concealment. Your speed is incredible. You have short fuse AP, so you're not overpenning nearly as much. Battle cruiser dispersion on these guns, so they're very accurate. 457s means you overmatch 30 millimeters of armor, which is really good. The torpedoes, well, they you only get one per side or kind of forward launchers. They do 30,000 damage. They're absolutely hilarious. The speed boost is awesome on this ship but it's not the tankiest. It's not very well armored and you have to rely on a super heal. So it's a little bit tricky to make use of that, um, but I am putting an A tier. So I don't necessarily recommend this line for beginners, but it's just such a strong ship that if you don't have it and you've played the game a little bit, I think you have to go get yourself a St. Vincent. It's awesome. And following the next uh, British battleship, Conqueror. This one's been in the game for quite some time now. I think St. Vincent basically does what Conqueror does already, but a little bit better. <laughs> I think the guns are much better on St. Vincent. The maneuverability is awesome. Even though Conqueror isn't quite as weak when it comes to the HP pool and the armor, 
it's still going to get farmed very quickly and relies on its super heal to stay alive. The accuracy is much worse, and you don't have the fun torpedoes to use. So I think St. Vincent, Vincent is just a much better ship, especially in today's meta. Um, but Conqueror can make things work as well, but I don't really recommend it all that much. I think it's kind of a boring ship to play at tier 10. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Yamato, the only one I put in S tier. And I debated removing S tier completely since I would just comfortably have Yamato in with a, all the A tier ships. But the reason Yamato gets S tier is that if you're new to the game, you haven't played any battleships before, I think you should go for Yamato. It's just amazing at tier 10. Grinding up the whole line, it's very consistent so you can learn how to play battleships. You won't be suddenly changing up your play style as you go from tier to tier. You're just going to be building on all the concepts you're learning at lower tiers as you get to mid tier and as you get to high tier. Yamato's been in the game since the start and it's maintained its position as one of the best battleships in the game for that entire time. So you're getting a great reward at the end. I think the tech tree all the way up is nice and consistent. And for that reason, it goes in S tier. If you don't have the Amato, you should certainly think about getting it, um, especially if you've played the game a lot and you have some of these other battleships and you don't have a Yamato. It's a really good ship worth picking up. So that's my list of the best tier 10 battleships in the tech tree that you should be looking to grind in 2023. Let me know what you think of this list in the comments down below. I'd love to see what your picks are for the best battleships to be grinding this year. Um, with that said, I hope you have a great Christmas. This is coming out Christmas week. Um, I'm trying to take some time and spend some time with family. So making these videos a little bit early. Hope you guys enjoy. I think this is a very interesting topic looking at the best tech tree ships to be grinding. So you can definitely expect some cruisers and destroyers in the future. We'll certainly be looking at some of the premium ships as well for coal and steel. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your holiday.